there, buddy. I'm going to head off to Nashville, so I will see you tomorrow, but in video terms, it'll be a few days. You have a great time, Jaw. We had a great night, didn't we? We were hanging out and wrestling and everything. Yeah, I know. I'll see you tomorrow. Everybody will think it's going to be a long time, but it's actually just tomorrow. Traveling the back towns of Alabama on our way to Nashville today. And the first thing I want to do in Nashville today is I want to go to the Willie Nelson Museum. I love Willie. I love everything about him. Got to see his museum. Oh man, we are here. I am so excited. One of the greatest people in all of music history in every way. Great songwriter, great performer. Helped everyone. Did it all ground grassroots from the ground up. Let's go. All right, we got our admission. We're gonna go on into the museum and talk all things Willie. The old miner looks suspiciously like Willie, doesn't it? Willie's peach butter. Dude, just take my money now. You can just have it all. You make sure it's like that, it's it's over. Two doors, the first one is the Willie door over here, and then after we get to check out the Waylon Jennings room, which I love Waylon Jennings, so this should be great. They were, they were like brothers, and uh, they called themselves the Outlaws. Now Willie has a really interesting history because his parents, got a divorce when uh, when he was just a kid and he went and lived with his grandparents and his grandparents became music teachers through the mail like through correspondence so every day he would watch them study music and learn to write music and they would always be playing music and his grandpa would always perform so Willie got to uh, learn firsthand look at that Waylon Waylon's guitar. So of course he has a uh, a lot of, as you'll see here, exhibits on his friends and people that influenced him. Now Willie's story was really fascinating because he, um, his his grandmother said, you know, you can play music, but you don't want to go on the road. That's you know, that's when all the bad stuff happens. And he was here from Abbott. And so he said when she said that, she meant even when he played his first gig eight miles down the road, she thought everything was taking a turn for the worse. So he ended up getting a job as a tree trimmer here in Abbott and would go perform in the evenings. And they said that he was like so poor at that time that he would pawn his guitar on Monday and then get it out of the pawn shop every Friday and this went on for years so he finally took that tree trimming job and um, that's great he took the tree trimming job and he said one day he was climbing up a tree and they were roping it up and he said instead of coming back down the tree the way I went up I decided to come down the rope which, which was a big mistake and he said I got tangled up to where I couldn't go up and go down so he asked the guy he was working with he said just cut me down and he said he cut the rope and Willie fell in between two power lines, went down, hit the ground and said, I, I hit the ground, got up, started walking and never stopped. I never went back to that job and I just kept looking for opportunities to play music. So he then became a radio DJ and he went to a gig and watched the woman who had written um, Heartbreak Hotel play. And he told her, he said, I play all of your music. I love everything you do and I wanna write songs I recorded some, will you listen to him and let me know if they're any good? And she said, well, I listened to him just because he said he played all my music. I figured, he, you know, he's gotta be pretty good. She listened to the music and she said, son, you gotta get yourself to Tennessee or Austin or somewhere where they'll buy your music because you're really good. And he went around, nobody would buy his music in Texas. So he came here to Nashville. And that isn't even quite what he looked like when he came to Nashville. They said he had a crew cut and he came around, went up to Tootsie's where everybody that performed at the Grand Old Opry would go and hang out. And he, he found Hank Cochran there and said, um, anybody around here buying songs? And they said, well, let's hear some of your music. And he heard it and said, Willie was so good 
they were going to give the songwriting company that Hank Cochran wrote for was about to give him a $50 raise and he said, don't give me the raise, give that 50 to Willie so we can help him get by. And they built like a little shack and everything for him to stay in because he was so new to the area. And he said he would get bored in that shack and that's what inspired him to write, hello walls. Now this was Martha, this was his first wife and he met her back in the days when he was playing um, around Abbott and had just finished up that tree trimming job. He met her, she was a car hop and he liked it right away and uh, moving in with her and she had some kids so he would watch the kids during the day while she worked and then he'd go perform at night. You can see he had a couple of wives too. One of them, uh, when, when they divorced him, he said it was like the worst year of his life because um, he had a divorce, he, his music wasn't selling, his, his performances, like if he played live, he would, he would do okay, but, but nobody was buying his records. So he said, he, uh, <laughs> he said, one day I said, uh, I lost everything so far, and I wrote the song, uh, what else can, what, what, what's the song? Um, and he said, next day I woke up, got a phone call, my house was on fire. And they said, Willie, you need to get here, your house is on fire. And he said, ah, just pull the car into the garage and call it a day. Because <laughs> everything was going so bad, so. Look at all Whalen stuff. Now this museum's called Willie and Friends, so that's why you see so many uh, things of other people. That's signed out to Whalen and Jesse. Jesse Coulter from Little Jimmy Dickens. And there's a little Jimmy Dickens. And if you want a good laugh, go look up um, Willie Nelson and the Boar's Nest, and you'll see this this like sit down of all these old country guys talking about hanging out at Sue Brewer's Boar's Nest, and it's just hilarious. Waylon's amp, Waylon's luggage, and then it says. Waylon's actual passport while touring with the Highwaymen. That was his uh, super group with Johnny Cash, Willie, and Chris Christopherson. Now here we've got Jeannie Seeley. I don't know much about her, but I'll show it for those of you who, who are a fan of hers. And this uh, billiard table was made for Willie by the Brunswick Billiard Company. It said many other famous musicians and celebrity friends of Willie um, played pool on this table. It was located at his recording studio in Perdales, Texas. So yeah, he was living in Nashville and almost everybody tried to record him, like Chet Atkins, all the people that were making hits and stuff, because Chet Atkins was running RCA, but nobody could get a hit out of Willie. His songs that he wrote were, and in fact, he wrote Crazy, and they recorded that, and they just said, something's not right, what can we do to make this, look, that's Audie Murphy stuff, the actor. They're like, what can we do to make this song, you know, pop the way it should? Well, let's have a woman sing it. Patsy Cline came in, sang it in two takes, and the rest was history. And even um, Willie said, that's my favorite version of, of anyone doing my song is Patsy. I didn't know that he was friends with Audie Murphy, but that's interesting. Audie Murphy was like a war hero as well, not just a, an actor. And this is uh, Barbarossa with Gary Busey. What's interesting is, so like Willie wasn't selling and doing much here in Nashville and the house burned down. So he just said to his band, why don't we just get out of here? Let's just go to Texas and play beer joints. And, uh, and they built a grassroots movement there. And when he was there, he got so popular that like old people, young people, hippies, soul people, everybody were, were coming to see him. And they gave him a radio show where he would play at noon and he would sing the kids to sleep. He would do like a 15 minute show at noon on the radio when the kids were taking nap time <laughs> and he would do the redheaded stranger and and he wanted to get into movies and they said when he when he uh, saw like Robert Redford acting and stuff he's like I think I'd like to do that and they're like Willie yeah, that's easier said than done you can't just like go be in a movie well sure enough they put him in the movie and he improvised all of his lines and was cracking everybody up and they said he's a natural so it's no surprise he was in a bunch of movies this is all his stuff from the movie. He's wearing that in the next photo I'll show you. So you can see him wearing that right there in the center. I 
as well as the hat. Check that out. Willie's mailbox. And then a totem pole with Willie on it. And you'll notice it says Willie Nelson and family. That's literally the deal. Now, when Willie performs, his sister that he grew up with, with his grandparents, she runs, his, she's on tour with him, she runs like the business. His brother, I believe, is in charge of Trigger, his guitar. His, uh, both of his sons perform in his band. I mean, it's, he said it's, it's always been a family affair and it always will be. Now here's some interesting costuming. Jan Howard. And there she is with Willie at the Grand Ole Opry. And then that is uh, Lloyd Lindroth, Liberace of the Harp with Willie. And that's his costume right there. Now one of the great things I love about Willie is that he writes songs about his friends. He writes songs for his friends to record, but he also writes songs about them. And this is him with Merle. And when Merle passed away, he wrote a really great song about Merle, just saying how he thinks about him every day. And we were friends right from the start. Brothers, written songs for Waylon. They've wrote songs together and recorded many albums together. I mean, he's, he's a great guy. There you can see there's another picture of Merle at the Ryman, which was the original Grand Old Opry. And then his other buddy, Chris Christopherson from The Highwaymen. And then one of the funny things that uh, I heard one of his friends say, his friend said, uh, Willie didn't get popular till Ugly became fashionable because he used to be real clean cut and then when he just let it all go and let the hair go and the beard and everything, people really related to him. Then of course, Glenn Campbell. So when Willie came to Nashville and he wrote Hello Walls, he tried to sell that to Farron Young for like 500 bucks. And Farron said, I'll tell you what, you're that hard up for money. I'm going to record the song, but I'm not going to buy it off. Y'all loan you money. And he said, uh, <laughs> he said a couple of weeks later, Willie got a check for $20,000 and, uh, and found Farron at a bar, walks up behind him, puts his arm around him, opens his mouth and French kisses him. <laughs> Said, uh, said uh, Farron Young says, best fresh kiss I had to this day. <laughs> yeah, but Willie was amazing in that regard because people like Farron and Webb Pierce would record Willie's songs when he was struggling early on and then later on when country hit a lull and um, none of those guys could get record deals, Willie would record their songs, like do tribute albums to them and remind people how good they were. He really gave back a lot to everyone. Then of course some of the greatest songs are like Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, On the Road Again. I mean, he, and then he did, he really had a hit with um, Stardust when he did uh, an album of what were just classics like traditional standards that he liked. He did it with his twist because one of the things that made him not successful in Nashville was the fact that he he kind of liked jazz enough to where he would sing after the beat and some people saw that as being untrained but it was just his style. So when he finally got to make music on his own, he really got to do it his way and he was really successful. There you can see uh, David Frizzell, Shelly West, Dottie West, and Kenny Rogers will check out their stuff and then head in to check out Willy stuff. We have more videos coming up. There's Dottie West and Kenny Rogers performing together wearing those outfits that we see in the the foreground to us. They're wearing them in that picture. They're doing some filming of some sort here in the museum. There's Conway Twitty in his car with a sign check. That's Webb Pierce's nudie suit. Check that out. He's wearing it on that record jacket that I'm going to show you. That's incredible. Good job, nudie. We're going to get to check out some nudie stuff while we're here in town. 
you can see the back of the stools here that came with the pool table set up. And this is all Barbara Mandrell. It's her outfit and her shoes. Ronnie Millsap. Now here's a booth from Tootsie's, the famous place that he really came, that was like the first place he came to when he came to Nashville. Check this out. Original booth and table from Tootsie's Orchid Lounge and it's all signed by people. And then look at the booth seats. So you've got 615 going on today. This was a really famous place. I mean, even like Hank used to slip out of the Opry and go drink here. It says that was Tootsie Bess smock that she used to wear around the Orchid Lounge. And uh, she said that she would always blow the whistle real loudly to let everyone know when closing time had arrived. That's neat, they even put the floor in there. That was the stool from Tootsie. Okay. Now this is great, this is Willie's guitar from when he performed at the Grand Old Opry. Look at that. And the original uh, mic stand and everything. As Martin, it's not Trigger, for Trigger. There, look at the picture of Willie performing there, playing that guitar. Look how clean cut he was then. So take a look at the pit guard. You can see that tortoise type shell on it right there. Here you can see the same tortoise shell there on the pit guard. And that, uh, that microphone stand is the exact one that's right there in front of him. It says the big night occurred on November 23rd, 1963. Who could have predicted his meteoric rise to legendary superstar status of the original outlaw of country music? Photo captures Willie on stage behind the Grand Ole Opry microphone while strumming his Martin D-18. Now priceless guitar was acquired by storekeepers Jeannie and Frank Oakley from Willie's second wife, Shirley. And this says this is his pay stub showing his nightly earnings. Total pay of $15 and take home of eleven seventy one. At the time, Willie was commuting back and forth from California at a cost of over $200 per trip. Look at all the little beat up marks all over the guitar. I love that and on the microphone stand at the base of it. There's Willie checking his mailbox in Ridgetop, Tennessee when he lived there. Now let's check out this Willie and friends. Let's see what all's in here. This says the hat belonged to Ernest Tubb, another guy that Willie helped out. It says notice the custom engraved belt buckle it was given to Willie Nelson by Ernest Tubbs or Ernest Tubb in 1965, when Willie Nelson became a member of the Ernest Tubb Show. Welcome back to Country Classics. Harold Wardy's Tennessee Run is not only one of his biggest hits. Welcome back. And there's the album cover from Waylon and Willie. And then here's Willie's Welcome album with Webb Pierce. And it's signed out to the, uh, the museum here, the owners of the museum. And then it says that this black hat, which is awesome, kind of furry, it says, uh, was given to us by our friend Webb Pierce. The same hat that he's wearing on the cover he cut with Willie Nelson titled, In the Jailhouse Now. So take a look at that. And then take a look up there. Now that's Willie's traditional guitar strap that we always see strapped to trigger and in fact you can see a, a, a painting right here. It's like a black velvet type thing. 
So this was one that he actually used in 1992 when he played in Branson. And then that bandana was the same bandana that he wore at that same show. And he signed it. There's the highwayman. You can see Willie's got that guitar strap. That's the whole crew. Willie, Waylon, Chris, and Johnny. And then that is hilarious. That's Willie out of the golf links. <sighs> Who knew? Who knew Willie, Willie was a golfer, huh? And apparently a dedicated jogger says he's been a runner throughout the years. Early on he decided his favorite running shoes were made by a little company known as New Balance. This is one of the first pairs of New Balance shoes that he wore while jogging and performing. Now this was from the Willie Nelson jeans line. Willie jeans, they said in the height of his career in the 1980s they released these. And all the way down to the... Um, metal, the buttons, and the little uh, tag over here and everything. It all says Willie on it. Let's check it out. You guys are hearing this guy record whatever he's recording. Now there's a Willie Award case. There's quite a few awards. Some Grammys, some CMA awards, some Billboard awards. One of the funny things is he said his first song that he sold to anyone in Nashville, he sold it for 50 bucks and it became a number one hit. And he said, but I wasn't too mad because he said back then I had a lot to say and I knew if I had one number one, I could do it again probably. And I sure had enough to talk about to do it, which I thought was great. That's, that's one heck of a way of looking at it. And that's the... Academy of Country Music Award for Farm Aid and his American Music Award. And then Artist of the Decade and the Ernest Tubb Humanitarian Award. And that's the song they say really changed things for him. Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. And I really think it's his performance of it. He just sings it so beautifully. his Golden Boot Awards for the album The Outlaws and for Willie Nelson Live. There's his 1980 Best Country Song of the Year Award, Grammy Award for On the Road Again. And when he wrote that, they actually wanted it to be for a movie. And so he said, I want to write a song, you know, about what I like in life being on the road so when he sang it to his friend he said what do you think of these lyrics on the road again on the road again can't wait to get back on the road again and he's reading it to him on an airplane with no music and his friend said I mean just imagine what I'm thinking and I go well do you have any music for that Willie and Willie goes oh don't worry about the music I'll come up with that <laughs> take a look at that Isn't that neat that's a wood carving Check this out. Here's some of uh, Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton stuff. I've actually seen Porter wear that in video. Look at that, Dolly. There he is wearing that jacket. That is neat. Take a look at that, oh, and look really? at the heel. We love Hey guys, welcome to Country Classics. I'm Sammy Sadler, and I'm at the Willie Nelson Friends Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. Be sure to stop by when you're in town. I'll get today's show started with a classic video from my Country Music Hall of Fame. This stuff is David Allen Coe. Thank you for joining me on Country Classics. I want to remind you that all of my music is available anywhere you stream or download music. You can find my book about the real murder on Music Road called A Hit With A Bullet on Amazon.com. Videos, new music, and links to my socials are online at SammySadler.com. I'm going to leave you this week with a video from country star Kip Moore. I am... Sorry, I'll put in something.
This is neat. It says this ring is a gift from Patsy Cline to Hank Cochran, the songwriter, in 1962 for writing I Fall to Pieces. The song became number one. I'm Sammy Sutter, and you're watching Country Classics on Cayman 27. Let's do that one more. There's okay. Hank Cochran. The man who gave up his uh, $50 bonus yes, so Willie could Country have a job. And this is the hat that Hank Cochran wore yes, when he went out on Country tour Classics with Willie Nelson and the Family Band. He put all of his uh, backstage Don't passes on it. Now check this out, J.D. Sumner. You know that name if you're an Elvis fan. Check this out. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was a big part of the later Elvis years. Look at that guitar. Fender Coronado. That's interesting. Kind of looks like a Gibson. Down here you can set see it says a $15 ticket to Elvis Presley's concert scheduled for August 17th he died on August 16th and there's a copy of the seven inch Elvis has left the building by his friend JD Sumner look at that jacket Look, there's some pictures of him. That's like really, really at the end. You can tell kind of how how heavy Elvis is there. And then up here above. It says that Elvis idolized Sumner when he was a singer. When he was a kid, he used to sing with the Sunshine Boys. He ended up singing at Elvis's mother's funeral, as well as Elvis's funeral. He was one of Elvis's favorite gospel singers. Check that out, that bust of Willie. There you can see some Willie boots and his hat back there. And he gifted that, that cape to Paul English. So check this out. This was all in Willie's recording studio in Texas. And then the carpet, the Texas flag, was what he used to put on the floor of his stage for his stage shows for years. Now I'm looking, it says, notice there are two worn spots on the carpet from where Willie used to stand and sing. I'm thinking this must be because that's probably where the microphone stand was. He probably stood right there. There's Hank as Luke the Drifter. Now check this out. They even have a Patsy Klein case. Very very fitting considering crazy. Her jacket. Now one of the interesting things about her, she used to make and design a lot of her own clothes because originally she wasn't a huge hit and didn't have the money to to buy a lot of stuff so her and her mom would just make it the jewelry there's her paste tub There's a little set list, and her name is on there. That's a photo from her wedding day. And that's actually her very last pay stub from the Grand Old Opry.
It's a pretty good museum, but I wish there were more Willy and less of the friends. That's just me. I mean, I do enjoy a lot of the stuff that's in here. Don't get me wrong. I just, I really would have liked to have seen if they could have a little bit more Willy. I think I was expecting maybe more clothes, maybe more personal belongings, things, things like that. There's some, but not a ton. May Axton, that's who I mentioned earlier. She's who wrote Heartbreak Hotel, and she's the one that told him to go to a place where people buy songs because he was talented. And there's a picture of her right here with, of course, Elvis. And there's a tribute bust of the Honeysuckle Rose. An Ohio Entertainer of the Decade Award for the Ohio State Fair. A living legend, Willie Nelson. Good job, Ohio. You got it right. This is another great one that you wouldn't expect. You know, Willie recorded songs with various people from various different styles of music, including Ray Charles, but this one is Julio Iglesias, they're doing To All The Girls I've Loved Before, which is an amazingly beautiful song. And then this was a platinum record for Merle and Willie's hit, Poncho and Lefty. This one's really cool, you see what it says here? To Mr. Willie Nelson, a pickin' poet that mirrors our soul. And that's Willie with the owners of this place, so Willie must be, uh, must be good friends with them and have loaned or donated many of these things. That's kind of cool. It's a guitar signed by um, celebrities and various musicians that have come to visit the museum over the years. I see Bill Monroe signed on there. Um, let's see. Dallas Frazier, uh, let's see who else, Farron Young, Pete Wade, Hank Cochran, J.D. Sumner, Bobby Bear, Floyd Tillman, Scotty Turner, Webb Pierce, wow, oh, Newberry, James Newberry, that's the one that Willie and Wayland sing about. Newberry's train songs and blue is crying in the rain. Looking back to X's. Look at that. There's Farron's award for Hello Walls. Think about that. He heard the song, knew it was going to be a hit. Willie wanted 500 bucks and he said, No, nah, I'm not going to give you that money. I'll loan you whatever you want. This is going to be a hit, boy. And it was. It was enough of a hit to get a French kiss out of Willie. <laughs> And there's Willie and Farron together. And then this suit right here is uh, his singing Sheriff Farron Young owned suit. <laughs> Hello Wall's a good song. If you've never heard it, I mean, you can tell, like, <laughs> Willie said he wrote it in that little cottage while he was bored. The, I mean, it's the whole song's about being bored. <laughs> Asking the windows what they've been doing, what the walls have been doing, what the ceiling's been doing. <laughs> One of the funny things Farron Young says, he goes, I remember when you wrote that song and I performed it the first time, everybody around us started laughing and they were making fun of it saying, hello commode, hello uh, rain gutters. He goes, but we laughed all the way to the bank, didn't we? <laughs> and really cool for me just to see this part of Tootsie's knowing that it was so, such a big part, so influential in changing his life when he came here. It's really cool. Thanks for everything, Willie. You're one of the greatest ever. That is a great painting, check that out. I love that. Willie on the train, literally on top of the train, and it says Willie. <laughs> that is amazing. There he is, the red-headed stranger. Like I said, he would sing that to the kids over the radio, and it wasn't his song, but he loved it so much, he always sang it, and he said he sang it to his kids their whole life, and. He's always loved it and then became the red-headed stranger himself. All right, let's head out of here and go check out the gift shop. They've got some cool mementos there. Even with someone they love. Good one. I may have to get one of those. <laughs> Don't blame me, I voted for Willie Nelson. 
Well, I happen to have one dollar. Let's see what my fortune is from the old Willie Miner. Read that crystal ball to my benefit, please. I need some I need you some good words. This, but Willie Nelson's here to tell you that you better believe it. I take it not only one day at a time, but one moment at a time. And keep at that pace. If you can be happy right now, then you'll always be happy. Because it's always in the now. But first, give me some more silver coins and I'll give you a fortune. Wow, he really nailed it on my fortune. It says, you are a strong believer in fate. You feel that you have no control over your destiny. Fortunately, you are destined to be very happy indeed. Well, we'll see about that, Willie. We shall see. Willie's gummy munchies. <clears throat> wow, look at all the awesome Whalen stuff they're selling, too. Actually, I actually already have that. I'm going to wear that tomorrow, in fact. I did get a couple of uh, Willie guitar picks. I did get a couple of these. Check that out, a Willie harmonica. Well, there we go. We have done it. We have checked out the Willie Nelson and Friends general store and museum hope you guys enjoyed this let's call it a day and uh, we will see you all tomorrow go listen to some Willie he deserves it have a great night everyone and goodbye